Well, hi, Jack and Brian. John Allen from New York. I trust everyone uh, survived the holiday season and uh, New Year celebrations. Um, it's been a busy week here again, uh, after all of that. And uh, this week I worked on my uh, motor. Uh, I had a motor squeak, so I want to show you that. And um, um, the remedy for that, once talking to George Hamstra and Tom Bunker, about uh, how to get over the squeak that I had in my motor. Um, I had been spraying a, um, a lithium grease in there and it soon sort of, uh, it, it got rid of the squeak for a short time and, uh, and then it would come back. Um, and they looked at me in uh, sheer horror when I told them about that. However, they did tell me how to clean it and uh, I've got that to show you uh, uh, this week. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I have the motor and transmission out and I'm going to get this down on the ground and then I can take off the motor, remove it from this old transmission and then put my new uh, or, or my second hand, new second hand transmission on. Um, after I've got all the clutch and the adapter plate and everything fitted on. Uh, but first of all, I have a squeaky motor, so I'm going to actually uh, clean this motor um, the way Tom Bunker suggested with the garnet paper on the commutator. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get that organised. Like the coupling and everything is fine. There's no wear on this, on this uh, rubber Buna Spider, whatever it's called. It's great. Gradually opening this up and let's see. I've got some wires here. And the last time I spoke with George Hamstra from Netgain Motors, I asked him about these wires and he said, Oh you can just cut them and we won't use them. So I think I'm gonna do that. Brush. Alright, there's one. There's two. Okay. 
cut them off and then we'll clean it up once I get that head off. This is the ML1693 brush and I'm going to just have a quick look to see how long that is. It looks like I've got an inch and 11 sixteenths from the longest point where the curve starts. Yeah, almost, hang on a minute, almost an inch and three quarters. So I don't know quite exactly where it's gone, you know, where, where the, what the point is at which uh, it's too worn. Maybe, maybe you might be able to help me out, George, um, and let me know, looking at it. Uh, plus, you know, I'm just wiping it with a rag to clean it off. Um, maybe if, if I'm doing anything wrong, hopefully you can let me know on an email. Anyway, that's what that is. I might need to get some new brushes for this. I'd like to get the ones from Helwig. I've got all these things undone. shim here. You see that? And another one on the inside. Okay, that must be to hold that bearing in. So sprung shim. Let's put that in the way it came out. On top of that. Okay, double sprung shim. Looks like they're shaped the same way. It's just there's two of them together. See that? And they're in the same hole like that. Obviously, to hold this bearing back in there. Okay. So, this is the commutator, and it looks. I don't know what it's supposed to look like. There's some gunk on there. It'll be from the brush when it was sitting there. You can see how much gunk there is in there. I think that's all the grease that I sprayed in there, this lithium grease. Which I'm sure didn't help the matter much. Well, actually it did at the time. It was great because it stopped the squeaking. But I've got to try and clean all that off now. I'll probably use some gasoline or something like that. Not sure if I'm doing exactly the right thing, but I don't want all that muck in there. And they say, a man who never made a mistake never made anything. At least that's what my stepfather, Tug Wilson, would say. So go ahead and do it. If it feels right, go for it. If you make a mistake, you learn from it. Well, I have nobody here to guide me. And I need to get the job done now. I have here some 80 grit garnet paper which I bought at my local hardware store and I'm going to cut this into 3 inch strips because um, that's the width of the commutator and then I'm going to be able to uh, get 3 pieces out of this and use that on, uh, 
on the initial cleanup. So here's my paper. I'll just put that on there like that. to be cleaning it up nicely. So now I'm going to use a, a strip of 180, so it was the 80, then the 180, and then I'll finish up with a 220. Tom Bunker described to me how to go about cleaning this, and then also he said to take the edges off I've got a file here, I've done the first one, and I've marked it here so that I know where I am. Um, and I'm just going to just take those sharp corners off. This is going to take about four hours to do this, to clean this. I see why. See the stuff that's coming out of there? See all that stuff that's coming out? That's what you're going to try and get out, I think. There it comes. So I have the motor all assembled again, with the uh, brushes put back in. And I've set it up on the bench here so that I can run it and seat the, the brushes again. Um, I've got it hooked up to a, my, a charger. Um, it's a CarQuest charger that I had around. Uh, yes, yeah, so I have it set up on the 12 volt, 2 amp slow charge setting. Um, and, you know, this is quite good because I have an on off switch here that can hold or put it on a timer. Obviously I'm going to try and run it for about uh, five days as recommended. But I'll probably only run it during the day when I'm in the shop, so I'll, I'll probably take about ten days to do it. Um, we'll see how that goes. So back to the bench here, I'm about to switch it on and see how it sounds. Seems to be pretty noisy. I thought this would be quite a bit quieter, but maybe it's just a case of the the brushes need time to seat in because I had them all out. Anyway, you can see how noisy that was uh, that motor, and I'm not sure if uh, George could let me know if that's normal. Um, it seems a bit noisier than it should be. Uh, maybe it's normal, and the brushes do need to be seated in. Uh, anyone who has any uh, light they could shed on that would be uh, would be great to let me know whether or whether there's something actually wrong with the motor. Um, maybe there's a vibration in there that's just not going to go away. I, I don't know. It doesn't feel like there's any vibration, um, uh, so I, I'm not I'm not certain. But maybe someone who who knows about these things uh, will be able to hear it and uh, be able to at least tell me what's going on, or whether I should just continue running it. Let the brushes seat. Um, I would like to try those red top uh, brushes that uh, Tom Bunker makes. Uh, anyway, that's me, uh, John Allen from New York for EVTV. Have another great week, guys.